now, and we are recording. Good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing? This is Calvin Butler with the RBBS Logistics Learning Center and the National Dispatchers Network. Today is Saturday, 10.15 a.m. We are starting on time for a change, right on time, 10.15 and 10 seconds. <laughs> that's, about, that's about as much of the time as you can get. So I want to thank you all for joining us. And today is the Six Figures Booking Free From Home show. You're here every Saturday from 10.15 till about 12.15 on up to 115 if need be, but we are here. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We have a new member, Ms. Uh, Williams, I think, Ms. Williams, she is new. Thank you for joining us. Um, we've got some other people who are, who are, who are logging in here late, but they'll, be, but they'll be joining us as well. Today, 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 we've got some announcements, some things that we're going to go over, and today's subject today is the top 10 problems or concerns within the trucking industry, okay? That's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about what are the top 10 problems that we see or that the experts see is the problem with the trucking industry today. Not only are we gonna be talking about it, we're gonna try and come up with some solutions on how we can solve those problems or how we can begin to work on those problems because everything that has a problem can be solved. Now. We may not know how to do it yet, and I have the technology to do it yet, but it can be solved. So while we're waiting on technology or we're waiting on someone to come up with an idea, we can do what's called theorize. We can come up with synopsis, we can theorize, we can put things together, you know, and you know, if it works in theory, if the theory is based in real science or real uh, mechanism or real procedures, guess what? It can be solved. Okay? So Let's put our heads together today. Let's see if we can come up with some answers or start to come up with some scenarios of how we can solve the top 10 problems within the trucking industry. All right, before we get to that, let's go ahead and make an um, announcement and say hello to everybody on Facebook. We are, let me go start sharing my screen here so everyone can see, uh, first of all, what we, what we got going on. Uh, what's my share button? Here we go. Got to share, share, share. Everybody wants to share. All right, there we go. We are now sharing, and you all can now see my screen. So I'll also see you in the background, get our big screen up. So if we need to rely on anything on YouTube, and now I can put it up there and blast it, and you all can hear it. So, 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 we, so it, hopefully we can solve that problem. All right. If you are a member of our network, if you are a subscription member of, of our network, I need you all to go to my dispatcher dot org that's my dispatch org and then you can go over to the curriculum the live training and curriculum page and when you get there right here you can come down here and you can click on where it says join the online meeting and you will be able to join us live and participate ask me questions and pick my brain and talk to other people who are on our live broadcast so if you are not a um, was a paying subscription member of our platform, you won't be able to join us live. Okay, that's how the cookie crumbles. Okay, this is a pay. This this is a pay to play. Uh, you, you know, you've got to be a subscription member to join us live and to engage myself and the other members and ask questions and things of that nature. If you are not a subscription member, you know all is not lost. We have you all on Facebook. We are on several places on Facebook. As you all can see here, we are in the RBBS Business Planning Center. We are also on Truckers, um, All Truckers United. We are also on the Freight Broker Group. We are also on the Social Media Load Board. We are also on Black Truckers United. We are also on CDL Professionals. And we are on several other groups on Facebook. Uh, freight broker trainers and instructors. So we are all over the place today on Facebook. So there's no excuse for you all not being able to join us. And for those of you who are on my personal page, I am broadcasting on my personal page as well. So, whew, that was a lot to say. <laughs> let me let some people in. Uh, some people are knocking and they want to get in. So let's let them in. All right. So, as I was saying today, Hello, hello, hello. As I was saying, um, uh, our chat has been very, um, very, very, very active. Now, I know that you all 
or in the chat group a lot. I, I would tune into the chat group. And for those of you who are not um, familiar with our platform, our members get to go into a private chat group, okay? And these are all, you know, freight brokers, freight dispatchers, um, some owner operators and things of that nature. And we're actually working on trying to get some shippers um, to join our chat groups too as well. We're gonna be adding in shippers, we're gonna be adding in uh, factoring companies, uh, um, executives and things like that. So those are some of the new things that we're working on for this year. We are gonna be adding a more diverse group of people to our private chat groups. Now, those people who we're bringing in from the outside, they won't necessarily be subscription paying members. Normally, our chat group is only available to subscription paying members. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be allowing vendors, some vendors to come into our chat group because they possess a certain expertise or they possess a certain industry um, um, status or knowledge that our group can benefit from, okay? So that's what we're gonna start doing. We're gonna start adding those people into our chat group and listing them in and letting them converse with, with our paying subscription members. And I think that's gonna be a big, big boost uh, for our members is going to help you all a lot. Um, I've already been talking with some people over at the uh, CNPMS, people over at um, at one of the major factoring companies. We've also been talking with some shippers uh, that I have, and they've all expressed some interest in becoming part of our chat group to see what's going on with you all knowing your head, see what type of problems y'all are having, see what type of things you all are discussing, to see if they can help with bringing some of those things to, you know, uh, to get some of those things I'm taking, I'm taking care of. Uh, as I can see, we do have two chat groups on Facebook. We have chat group uh, number one, and we have chat group number two. If you are one of our old members from way, way back, back in the day in 2017, like a long time ago, though. <laughs> if you're one of our old members from way back in 2017, you're probably going to be in chat group one. If you are one of our newer members who joined us within the latter part of 2019, well, the beginning of 2019 and maybe the latter part of 2018, chances are you're going to be in chat group number two. Okay, so that's where you're going to be at. Let me see if I can speed this internet up. The internet should be working very, very fast because I just upgraded to what do they call their 600 megahertz or whatever it is that add up the. 15, no, 22 devices or something like that. So it should be working really, really, really fast. Um, but this is our chat group. This is what it looks like. As you're going to see, we share a lot of information. Now, within these chat groups, this is where everyone comes and they talk to each other. You all get to talk to each other. You all get to share things. You know, people put up little posts and stuff and like that. But it's primarily all stuff that's concerned with the trading industry. Uh, you all are asking questions of each other. You all are helping each other to find shippers, helping each other to find loads. Um, you all are doing a lot of constructive things within these chat groups where you all talk about a lot of stuff. Some of the other, some of the things that you all talk about is your concerns with the trucking industry. Okay, and what I do is every now and then I will get involved on the chat group, but that's not what the chat group is really made for. The chat group is made for you all, for our members to discuss things amongst yourself and to come up with solutions amongst yourself. This is how you become better at what you do, okay? By learning from each other and teaching yourself, okay? By supporting each other. How you all become better at what you do. Now, every now and then, I will jump in and I will lend my two cents. But I primarily use the chat groups to see what's going on inside you all's head, okay? And as I'm looking over the chat group, you all are discussing some things, but I'm also taking note of some of the difficulties that you all are having within, within the industry. So in the background, what I am doing, I'm looking over your, over your concerns, and I am trying to formulate and come up with solutions to help alleviate those concerns or to solve those problems. Now, that's a big monumental task. <laughs> There's a lot of problems within the trucking industry, okay, which is, uh, brings us to the subject of our show today, which is the 10 most pressing concerns within the trucking industry or the 10 biggest problems within 
the trucking industry. Okay, that's what we're going to be going over um, today. So, with that being said, let's get started. All right, how's everybody doing today? Let me make sure we got everybody up and going. How's everybody doing today? Can everyone hear me? Good. All right, great, great. We want some participation today because today is going to be one of those days where we're going to talk. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. I want to listen to you all. We're going to try to come up with some answers because what we're going to do today is we're not only going to discuss the 10 biggest problems within the trucking industry. We're going to try to come up with solutions. We're going to try and get you all started to try to come up with a solution. But as I said just a minute ago off camera, with every problem, I don't care what the problem is. It can be scientific. It can be theoretical. It can be theoretical. It can be, you know, uh, you know, monumental problem. It can be a very, very small problem. It can be a mechanical problem. It can be something that's in your head. Every problem has a solution. There's a solution, there is a solution for every task, for every problem, for everything that you're trying to accomplish. There is a solution for it. Now, the question is, as tech, do we have the technology? Okay, first of all, do we have the know-how? Second of all, and the third, do we have the will to solve those problems? Okay, now most of the time we have the will. And we have the know-how, but we may be lacking the technology. Or we have the technology and we have the will, but we lack the know-how. Now, fortunately, the will is something that you have to have. I don't know. I can't give that to you all. I can't teach that to you all. No one can give you the will. That's something that's, that, that you gotta have already. But the know-how can be learned, okay? And the technology can be developed. So, with that being said, do you all think that the current problems in the trucking industry right now can be solved? Get a show of hands. Yay, nay. Yes. Yes, okay. Somebody says yes. Does anybody disagree with that? Nobody disagrees with that. Now, y'all gotta remember, I like to hear y'all talk. I like participation. You, know, you gotta come and talk to me because if y'all don't talk, I start singing. And nobody really wants to hear me sing, but if y'all don't talk to me, I will start singing. I'll be up here singing like on JoJo and Jodeci and think I'm sounding good, but y'all know I'd be sounding terrible. So y'all gonna talk to me or am I gonna sing? What is it gonna be? <laughs> okay. All right, I need some participation. One person says that they think the problems can be solved. Kim, let me ask you a question. Do you think the current problems within the industry can be solved, or are they just, or some of them just out of our control, or are they just too great? Kim, can you talk to us? I have you. I tried to unmute you there. There we go. Somebody's talking. Uh, we got Charles, we got Kim, we got a whole bunch of people. I want y'all to talk to me now because we need to hear from you all. Matter of fact, I am going to unmute everyone so you all can talk if you all want to. All right. This is going to be a long, boring session if y'all don't, if you all are not going to participate. First of all, let me check, let me check my mic again. Can everybody hear me? Yes. I yes. Can. All right. Well, I know yes. y'all are there. <laughs> so let's so let's get some answers. Okay. Let's get some answers. Now, uh, let's go back to this again. Question was. Question was, can the current problem within the industry now be solved, or are they just too great, or is it just not worth it? They can be solved. All right. Great. I also agree. I agree that they can be solved. Now, let's go and figure out what those problems are. All right. Um, what do y'all think is at the is at the top of the list? We're, <laughs> we're looking at a survey that was done in Freightways. And y'all don't know Freightways is a um, is a publication. I like reading Freightways because they have a lot of great, great articles and stuff. 
<clears throat> they have a lot of great artists, okay? Now, what do y'all think is the number one problem in the free um, industry? I'm out of gotta speak up. Yes, I'm gonna take a guess and say driver shortages. Okay, driver shortages. Um, um anybody else? What's the next one? Driver shortages is one. That, and by the way, that is at the top of the list. Driver shortages. Okay. Um so come on now. I now, now I know y'all have these concerns because I see y'all in chat groups all the time. And y'all are talking about. So I know y'all have the concerns, and you know, I mean, look, if you're gonna attend these, um, these classes, if you're gonna attend these live broadcasts, one thing you all have got to be used to, you gotta participate. This is not one of those boring sessions where I sit up here with a chalkboard and point this stuff. Y'all know me by now, y'all watch enough of my videos, okay? You know, if you come here, you gotta talk, like, all right? That's, that's just how it is, all right? So, it's is automation um, an issue? Okay, so automation, which means all of these, and you're talking about all these. Uh, these the trucks. trucks. Yeah, these yeah. trucks that are now coming up who are driving without drivers. Exactly. Okay, so that that goes towards what? To um, perpetuating driver shortage. Well, not really. It kind of, that's their, that's their way of solving it, but it's putting a lot of people out of business, a lot of people out of work. Is that what you're thinking? Yes. All right. So we got a lot of problems. All right. We got driver shortages is at the top of the list. Okay. When when um they asked, I think they I think they polled about a few thousand people within the industry. Okay. At the top of the list was driver shortage. The next was hours of service. Okay. Um, which means what? Not enough time. They feel drivers feel like there's not enough time for them to complete the task and um, to, to get things done. So therefore, it's cutting into what their money, right? Right. Okay. And then you have driver compensation, cheap rate, right? <laughs> driver compensation uh, that goes directly to what um, cheap freight. Okay. And then we have. Um, Detention, delay at customer facilities. Now, I can tell you for a fact that is a big problem. That's a big problem. Okay, um, how do you solve that? Well, we're going to try and come up with some with some solution. Now, um, parking, par um, truck parking. That's also a problem because a lot of these places want to just get rich off a of truck not having a place to park. You know, you go to park your truck and all of a sudden, you, you know, you put into some place and they want to charge you twenty dollars. Or a hundred dollars, or whatever it is, to to sit there for a few hours or a couple of hours, and some places just won't allow you to park at all. Even though you might deliver to them, you can't even park in the back and just hang out. You know, it, until your hours of service will let you drive again. So uh, that seems to be a problem. And then you have what driver retention turnover rate. Okay, um, there is a big turnover rate when it comes to drivers. Then we have the L E the E L D mandate. Okay. Did anybody know what that is? The L D. The no. uh, electronic. The electronic what? The electronic log. Yeah, exactly. The electronic log system. Okay. And then you have CSA. Anybody know what CSA is? DSA is going to be what? All right. We do have a logistics library. All right. Let's go to that logistics library and let's see what it says about CSA. All right. Those of you who are part of our platform, you can go over here to our logistics library. Once you click on it, it'll take you over to uh, an area where you can put in what you're looking for. And it will tell you what that is all about. Um, CSA has to do with the, uh, with the standards within the industry and like your uh, like your CSA score. Have y'all ever heard of that? CSA scores? Has anyone ever heard of it? 
Yes. All right. Um, what does that What does that normally um, refer to? We're talking about your PSA school. Is it safety compliance. There you go. All right. It's a combination of all your safety compliance and 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 things you do and how you operate within the industry. Okay. Uh, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, and it's uh, it's directly uh, connected with the, with the Federal Motor um, Carriers um, Administration. Okay, so what they do is they review, okay, because especially like if you're coming in and you're a new truck driver and you are going with a company, you know, big companies like uh, like Covenant, um, Snyder, um, um, uh, you know. Uh, JB Hutt, Swift, uh, those places, they're real big on talking about your CSA, 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 CSA. You get you, you hear that so much when you first come into the trucking industry. And, and, and you think, I mean, what is this, the FBI? You know, but, but yeah, your CSA, the CSA scores, the CSA scores can determine how long your career is. Because if you have that CSA score, or if you get gigs on too many things, like you'll be driving a truck and you turn a curb and your trailer hits a rock. Y'all ever notice how when you in Arizona or those those western states, those those states out west, they have these big boulders that sits on the side of the roads or in parking spaces. They have these huge big boulders. Now, when I first started driving, I was with um my trainer at Coven, and we was pulling into this um um um, um shipper. Um, um, and back then, you know, it was all drop and hook. Um, coming is a big drop and hook. You know, we don't unload trailers or anything. We just go and, you know, we drop it. We drop it and empty the trailer. We pick up a full trailer. So we went to pick up this, brief, this refrigerated um, trailer. And we was in Arizona. Um, and we went to this place. And they had all these boulders all over the place. So we pull in. And we get in. And remember, this is, this is like... I'm right out of right out of school, uh, first time behind the wheel, picking up a load, you know, myself. Back up, hook it up, do everything right, this, this and that. I'm coming out, and, uh, and as I'm coming out, this is a big boulder, you know, that's on the curb. And there's another truck that's trying to come in. I'm already at the stop, and I'm getting ready to try and turn out, right? So I have the right of way, right? So as I go out and try to turn out, you know, I'm trying to cut wide so I can turn because my trailer's going to turn short, right? But this is I'm doing that. That's what the other truck driver does. And then I take a guess. He's, he's, I'm here, right? Um, trying to turn or trying to turn like this, right? The boulder is over here. Well, I'm here. The boulder is here. The stop sign is here. The other truck driver is right here. Right? No, he's over here. You're ready to turn in. So as I make my little wide turn, trying to miss that boulder, guess what the other truck driver does? Does anybody want to take a guess? He cuts you off? Exactly. He starts out and comes in, but instead of him swinging wide, he turns short. <laughs> literally, just like, literally turns short. So I've got to like, Cut my wheel even harder to the right to avoid hitting his trailer. Why? Because his trailer is turning short, right? The trailer always turns shorter than your truck. Y'all do know that, right? So he turns, and his trailer's coming right at right at my truck's bumper. So here it is. I've got to turn mine, but I don't want my trailer to smash into his trailer. Y'all see what's going on? So in doing that, guess what I wind up hitting? The boulder, right? Yeah. Now, mind you, it didn't do anything itself. Uh, put a dent in the rim of the trailer wheel. That's all it did. Didn't damage the trailer, didn't hit the trailer, just the wheel, okay? Now, mind you, we didn't really think anything of it. You know, we, we're riding along, riding along. We get to our location, whatever. And then we notice that there's a dent in the wheel. 
So we got to go to get it repaired. And guess what? I got my only, my only bad mark on my CSA score for that for that incident. That's the only blemish that I've got that I had on my uh, my CSAs. Okay. And for that, I had to go and take a 12-hour class and you know, all the time so we had to pull into a terminal in California. We had to reroute and take a 12-hour class and we were shut down for like a couple of days. No, it's just crazy. But they but they get very, 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 very um um picky about those CSAs. Okay. Now. I don't know if any of you all have ever experienced that before. But they do, but they are very picky about the SAs. All right. The other one is transportation um, infrastructure congestion and funding. Then number ten is the economy. Okay. All right. Those are the top ten critical issues that they see as um, 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 in the industry now. How can we solve them? Anybody have an idea? How can we solve them? Because first of all, I think all of those can be solved. But the question is, how can we solve them? Right? Anybody have an idea on how those how those can be solved? Y'all don't have any ideas. Come on now. I, I know y'all got some ideas. I have no idea where to begin to brainstorm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's tackle driver shortage. Hey, driver shortage. Okay. Um, what causes driver shortage? Pay. Okay, pay. That's one. What else? What else? Come on, y'all. Hey. I told y'all a while back that when you join this platform, this is going to be more about than just teaching you all how to find and book freight. Okay, it's going to teach you all how to become logistics. Okay. What's, what? The majority of billionaires, they became billionaires for, for doing what? What do the majority of billionaires have in common? What, what do they do? What do they all have in common? Something that they did that propelled them to the status of being in their status. Does anybody know? The give back system. So you did what now? The give back system. Well, that too. But they did something. And something that they create, they did something. They did what? They solved the problem. Right? Right. Okay, most billionaires, when they, when they, when they, they identify something within the economy, within the system, within a company, within an industry, within something, something that there's a problem or there's a lacking of, or there's a need for, and then they set out and they solve that. What I'm trying to get y'all to start doing is this. I'm trying to get y'all to start talking amongst each other about certain things within the industry and figure out how to solve it. I refer to Mr. Khalid Hart. He saw a problem within how people are looking for loads, right? He called us up and said, hey, um, how can I find another way to uh, make myself known within the industry? And how can I make, how can I have an impact on the industry that will benefit me financially? I said, well, and he scheduled his consult. And we sat down. And one of the things I said, well, why not start with the industry you're in right now in our network? Okay. What seems to be a problem within our platform, within our procedures, within what we're doing now, what, what people do in you know, booking freight, 
what seems to be a what seems to be a common problem that everyone has and a problem that you think that you can solve. And of course, you all know that problem was finding lows faster. You no know, calculating what the cents per mile was, because you know our pitch patient says, how much money do you need to move your truck? So his background, which is in you know writing codes and uh, uh, internet security and things like that, uh, you know, knowing how to do those types of things and troubleshooting, he created a license key or a software key, some type of software or a program that allows you all to go on and use this, but allows us to use what? A straight dispatch. Just put this little thing is up, up here, as you all uh, can see. And when you do this and you put in you put in the license key, and let me get on this one over here and find out how this works. Those of you who don't know anything about this. When you're on um, right here, there it is, and you're on a lower board, okay, this pops up, and it basically, um, you put your license key in, okay, there it is, put your license key in, and then you have what, you have what's known up here, is your straight dispatch, and you when you put in the amount of money you're looking for, you put in $3.25, and you change, and you want to put your color, your highlight color, a red, green, gray, blue, or whatever you want your highlight color uh, to be. You click save and it updates. And you can also put in dead head miles um, to your pickup and dead head miles to your drop. Okay. Now, when you do that and you go to the low boards and you search the low boards, guess what? It highlights all the loads that are paying the amount of money you put in or higher. So, therefore, it greatly shortens your time looking for loads that fits your customers, your carriers, what? Criteria. Okay. Now, that happened because he did what? He identified a problem. And then he came up with a solution to that problem. So while you all are sitting around talking about the different things about what's going on within the industry, what I do is I look at the industry and I try to come up with, with, with solutions. Okay. And if you can come up with a solution, chances are that solution will make you a very rich and very wealthy person, as well as solve a very much needed problem throughout the industry. All right? So when I asked you all, I'm here again. I know that was a long window way of getting back around to, to, to this, but when we asked you all, what are some of the things on the top of your head that you all could, could do to solve driver shortage? Because I know you all have some idea. This, I mean, you can't have this many people. You can't have 10 people in a room and no one has any ideas whatsoever. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Don't worry about if it sounds stupid. Don't worry about any of that. Because here's the thing. No one solved it yet. So obviously, whatever you bring to the table, it's got to be a positive. Do you agree with that? Yeah. All right. Yes. So, again, I asked the question. All right. I'm going to make y'all think. I'm going to make y'all do some stuff here that y'all are not used to doing. Why? Because the greatest gains, are, they take place in areas of uncomfortable ability. All right. Millionaires and billionaires are not created in comfortable situations. You have to do things outside of your comfort zone. And I know this is making you all very uncomfortable. This is going to push you all very successful. Because in order to be very successful, you've got to get outside your comfort zone and you got to do things that are not comfortable for you. So let me get ready to make y'all very, very, very uncomfortable. Camille, are you there? Yes, I am. And I and somehow I knew you were going to call my name. <laughs> <laughs> you were feeling uncomfortable, weren't you? <laughs> There you felt go. the energy. <laughs> yeah, you you were feeling that uncomfortability. All right. <laughs> it was good. All right. So, in driver shortage, okay, we know some of the things. What are some of the things that causes driver shortage? Uh, for for owners, owner operators. For owner operators, period. The industry, period. What causes driver shortage? Um, probably the um, the amount of 
um, money okay. that they're making um, and maybe uh, things that come along with say standard nine to five ish jobs um, in terms of their security. Okay. And I, I mean, you know, like healthcare, things like that. Yeah. Um, things that people have available to them with a nine to five, maybe they don't have that for drivers or it could be more. Okay. Now, now, here's the thing. Are there not drivers always going to truck driving school? You, you said, do they go to truck driving school? Yeah. Are there not drivers attending truck driving school every single week, every single day? Yes. And are there now literally thousands of truck driving schools all over the country? Absolutely, yeah. Hundreds in every in, in, in every city. Right. So with that being said, how could there be a driver short? Hmm. So the question is not really a driver shortage, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the question is there's an abundance of freight. Right. Right. And that's ever increasing with our exactly. technology. Every, you know, exactly. it's ever increasing. Exactly. So so it's not so much of a driver shortage, but as an overabundance of freight. Right. So how do you address that? You know that you know that we have a whole bunch of freight. Okay? And there's a lot of freight out there, but I was not choosing a lot of that freight. I, I, I see. When you, got, when you got these companies, because people say cheap freight, cheap freight, cheap freight, cheap freight, okay? I don't believe there is such thing as cheap freight. Okay? Do y'all agree with me on that? I don't, I don't think there is cheap freight. Why do you think I say that? Because cheap freight depends on the person's overhead. There you go. Cheap freight is directly connected with your overhead. So it's not a matter of the freight being cheap, it's a matter of your overhead being high. Well, these mega companies, they can run cheap freight all day long. Y'all know that, right? Right. We talked about this one time before. How much money, let's say a, a company like, oh, let's look at a company. Let's, 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 let's look at something here. Let's go and let's Google. Uh, as how many company trucks? I'll see that right there. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many operated 16,200 units? Some of those are teams. 12,300 tractors by company drivers. And 3,900 owner-operator tractors. A fleet of 48,600 trailers. 4,500 intramodal containers from 35 terminals in the United States and Mexico, generating just over $2.5 billion in revenue. The year ended December 31st, 2009. Now, you can imagine how far they went. Right? Now, let me ask you all a question. How much money, how much gross profit at the end of the day, after paying all of their expenses, after paying everything, how much money do you think they need to earn per truck, per truck, each week to make a profit, to make that kind of money? Anybody want to take a guess? Five hundred dollars. Nope. 
about a hundred dollars. Not even that much. Fifty. Okay. Somewhere in the range of twenty-five dollars to fifty dollars per truck per week. That's it. Okay, that's it. Because look, sixteen thousand units. All right, twelve thousand three hundred tractors by company drivers. Let's just take the company drivers. The company drivers. Okay, twelve thousand three hundred. So y'all don't know Swift that big, did you? Oh yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they, <laughs> they, they, the boys are a juggernaut. Now, when you start seeing all these Swift trucks, you know, I say Swift is the, you know, the, the drivers can't drive. But when you got a truck company that big, it stands to reason that you're going to have more accidents, right? Just like because of just sheer, because of just the sheer size of the company, it's it's, it's just you know uh, the way numbers work, right? Yeah, more probability. Yeah, it's 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 the law of probability. And um, and probability. So you know it, it's just gonna happen, all right. So mm -hmm. look at that, all right. Let's just take their. Um, you said twenty five dollars a week per truck. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's over three hundred thousand dollars a week. Exactly. So they don't need to make very much money, right? Right. Right. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. So they can afford to run what. Freight. Cheap freight. All that cheap freight y'all say out there is cheap. It's not cheap. Not to them. That's money to them. <laughs> so this thing about cheap freight, that's not that's not a real big problem when it comes um to shipping. You know, because they hear people say all the time, well, these shippers are gonna do they want to move that uh, shipping gonna move the cheap freight, it, it just ain't gonna move it through you. Because you got companies like Swift, Western Express, Covenant. Uh, Snyder, all these companies that have any any company that has more than fifteen hundred trucks, has more than a thousand trucks. Any company that has more than a thousand trucks only needs to make about fifty dollars per truck per week. That's all they need to clear. They need to clear profit wise fifty dollars per truck per week. If you don't believe me, let's go to the numbers. If you got a thousand trucks. Right? <clears throat> thousand trucks. And if you only need to make fifty dollars after paying your fuel, everything for the whole week, everything, everything. If that truck can profit fifty dollars, you you're doing the money. Right? So that's gonna be times what? Fifty, right? Fifty bucks. So that's fifty thousand dollars per week that your company is bringing in. Per week. Now remember we said this is after paying all the Paying all the salaries, paying everything else, paying all this other stuff, blah, 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 right? You have to pay it everything. If they can just manage to hold on to fifty dollars, fifty measly dollars per truck per week. That's fifty thousand times fifty-two weeks. I'm in a year. That's two point six million dollars. Now that's a company that only has a thousand trucks. Y'all see what I mean? There is a place for there is a place for the so-called cheap freight. So these big companies, they can run this type of stuff. They can run them dollar loads, them, 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 them 75 cent loads, or dollar 25 cent loads. They can run that stuff all day long and be happy about it. They're paying their drivers anywhere from what? 24 cents a mile up to what? Maybe 56 cents a mile at the very top. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. On a company drive, because I know I'm coming to um, us, when I was a company, we was getting uh, 56 cents um, per mile. And that's that's about at the top of the scale. Okay, yeah. And we were a team truck. So we split the miles, but we each got 56 cents uh, per mile. And we was driving about oh, 75 to 7,700 miles a week. So we each were getting about 35 uh, so about 35 to 3,700 miles each at 56 cents a mile. You see what I'm saying? That's good money. We was, I mean, we was paying home $2,000 a week. Me and my team drive. Because we just just pulling everything. I mean, we're pulling everything. Reefers, and it's all dropping book. So you ain't got to waste no time. 
loading and unloading. You just pull into a place, you you know, you pull in, you drop the empty trailer, and you pick up a loaded trailer, you take off. <laughs> That's all we was doing. Okay? All the time we ever had to work for a load was at the FedEx place or Amazon. We was pulling something for Amazon there every now and then. We pull in Amazon and the trailer wasn't ready yet. Or FedEx. They were notorious for the trailer not being ready yet. But but everybody else was pulling for it. It was just, just literally dropping the hook. Yeah, you yeah, you load the trailers is, is in row, whatever, whatever, um, number, blah, blah, blah. You put the empty trailer over it on, and on row such and such and such. We're going to drop the empty trailer, pull back around, shine the light. We shine the light and I'm driving. You know, we got that big, that big spot out on the, you know, on the truck, <laughs> you, you shine it. Oh, there it is right there. Back it up, hook it up, let's go. Okay, so the money is out there, regardless of what, of, of what people say about cheap freight, cheap freight, cheap freight, cheap freight. The question is now, if you want to solve the problem of driver shortage or cheap freight, which is and so, so now we know that those two are intermingled into each other, right? Right. Right? All right. Right. So if you want to solve that problem, you got to find a way to make it so that carriers on operators can afford to do what? A cheap freight. Right. To be able to compete. Exactly. You got to level the playing field, right? Because the guy that has one truck to 50 trucks, he can't do what these companies do. He can't do what he got to have a thousand trucks. He has to make more than fifty dollars per truck at the at the end of you know, you know the whole thing, right? Right. He has a profit somewhere in the neighborhood of what, four or five hundred dollars a mm -hmm. truck, right? At the end of the week, which is a big difference. Exactly. That's a big difference. That so means he's got a grab freight that's way more than a dollar a mile. He got to be at 250 minimum, right? 225, 250 minimum. Right. And y'all see what I'm saying? Now, now, here's now here, now here's the thing. How do you solve that? That's what I think he kept on. Right? Because I'm working on this problem as we speak. I'm putting the team together and we pretty much, you know, figured out how to solve it. And we're gonna implement it. I'm coming up probably this summer. Okay, so I can kind of let the cat the bag now because everybody else is going to be playing catch up. <laughs> everybody else is going to be playing catch up. You know, uh, now, now I'm working with factoring companies, you know, people with the money. So we're working with those people and, and they love the idea. So, you know, everybody else is pretty much just playing catch up. Kind of let the cat the bag. Okay, but I'm, I'm still looking for a key, a few key people to help me to put this. Um, so, with that being said, how do y'all think that we could go about solving a problem of solving cheap freight? Put your thing caps on. See if y'all gonna come up with the same thing that we came up with. We show the we show the owners how to scale up. Okay, how to scale up, All right? But is that really but is that really practical? Um, are the of them scale up? They gotta be what? They gotta get more equipment. They gotta they gotta get more drivers for the equipment. Yeah, but that but that takes money, right? Right. Right. Oh, that's not really a. Uh, uh, I mean, that takes a lot of money, <laughs> right? Right. Right. So, out how to get their overhead costs down? There, there you go. All right. So you gotta. All right. That's one. Overhead. Cause it doesn't take a lot of money to cut your overhead, right? It takes money to scale up, but to cut your overhead, what is what does that take? You gotta lose some things. That takes a change in how you do business. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you really gotta look look at your operation. You gotta overhaul your operation and change how you do business. Right. So, what's the biggest overhead? Equipment. Equipment. Equipment and fuel. Exactly. Equipment and fuel. That's the big over here. 
here. Because a lot of times, the average truck, if you go out and get yourself a brand new truck, what's the average cost of a brand new truck? About $125,000. Mm. Exactly. $120,000 to $150,000. Big investment, right? Right. And currently, the way the majority of auto operators finance those brand new trucks, what do they do? They go to the leasing companies, they go to the lease them. finance companies, whatever it's going to be, right? And they, yeah. they pretty much buy like they buy a Chevy or GMC or, you know, or Ford F-150, right? Right. But that for $125,000, dollars that's going to run them about what? At least Three thousand a month, at least three thousand a month. So they're looking at almost nine hundred, seven hundred, nine hundred dollars a week, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and that don't include the insurance, and, you know, the maintenance. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, well, it, 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 I don't have to worry about maintenance because it's probably a maintenance thing. But still, that's you know, seven hundred, nine hundred dollars a week out of much, y'all, per week. Now. What if I told y'all that the winning cut that down to about three hundred dollars, six hundred dollars per month? Wait, say that again. <laughs> you heard me right. <laughs> what if I told y'all that the winning cut that down to three hundred to six hundred dollars per month? Wow. Line of credit. That would huh? that would make a big difference. Yes, yes, sir. And and and, and he just hit on. It. In this line, line of credit, credit. evolving line of credit. So financing your trucks like you finance a business. Right. See, you gotta start changing the way owner operators think. Because because see, because see, here's what happened. You got a lot of these guys, though, they're listening to social media, they listen to up on other truck drivers. And this is what goes, and this goes back to uh, what I was saying about. You got people who've been in the industry forever, and they'll tell you, well, this is the way it's done, and I know how it was done because that's the way they do it. And all that is, is you've just been doing it wrong for a very long time. That's all that means. You was taught wrong, right, by someone else who was taught wrong, by someone else who was taught wrong. So now everybody's just been doing it wrong for a very long time, right? doesn't mean that it's the right way to do it. It doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. It just means that that's the wrong way of doing because everybody else taught the wrong way of how to do it. Right? Right. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. All right. When I bought my truck, brand new Volvo, first truck I got. Love that truck. I know I walked up on the Volvo place and bought that bad boy. They must pay cash for $135,000. Oh. Wanna know how I did it? Got it. Fuck me with the time. Wanna know how I did it? Yes. We all in the line of credit. In this line of credit. Right? While I'm out on the road, driver was covering the transport, and we stopped at all these different places. I go in and I say, hey, Mr. Shipping Director, how you doing? You know, I'm kidding. Hey, can we get, yeah, man, you know, you know, we've been living here, you know, for about three, four months now. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, me and my partner, you know, this, that. You know, I've been thinking about getting my own truck. Oh, really? Okay. All right, well, go. Cool. You know, it's a good business. Yeah, it is. Now, if I did that, what lanes do y'all think y'all, you know, or, or, what, or what would I need to have in order to be on some of those lanes? Well, okay, I mean, you know, you've been running here quite a while, so, so. You know you know what you're doing. You already got that now. That's, yeah, we wouldn't have a problem. I'll put you on some lanes. And some of the things you're going to need is this. You're going to need your truck. You're going to need your, you know, your, you know, your proper, um, uh, all your credentials. You're going to need this much insurance. You're going to you start laying down to it. All right, well, great. So if I got all that, if y'all can, uh, which, uh, which lanes you think I would uh, most likely um, y'all can start me out with? Well, generally, you know, we start out new, you know, uh, 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 New contractors, you know, we start out with the lane from, you know, from Florida up to California. Start easy route, jump on I-10, head down to Orlando, you jump back on I-10, you head back up to California. You know, that's Walmart, right? You just running, you know, just running back and forth, back and forth. That's pretty easy. So that's what we start out with. Yeah, that sounds cool. 
And can you write all that down for me? Yeah, I can have um, Gary over there pick all that up for you and, uh, and give it to you a nice little package and all that type of stuff. Now, once he's done that, what have, what have I just done, y'all? Created a letter of reference. Not, not only that, you created a contingent contract. You have a, a contingency. Point. You have a contingency contract that tells you what, what you need. To tell you if I got myself a truck and met these criteria, they'll put me on this lane, paying this much money. Y'all think they'll hold some value with somebody? The bank. Yeah. Exactly. That holds value with the bank, man. With the man that's got the money, National Hill Bank man, right? Mm -hmm. That's who that whole value is. So if I went around to all the shippers that I'm running to, and I asked, let's have that same conversation, right? If we deliver to 50, 60 different shippers, you know, you know, in the course of a month, and I approached them all with that same attitude, that same approach, I mean, they contended contracts you think I can gather. Of what I need. Three, four, five, six. Right? Mm -hmm. I gather seven of them. I got seven of them. Seven ninja contracts in writing with the shipper's you know, letterhead at the top and the shipping manager, operation manager signature at the bottom. Oh. So now all I got to do is what? Put together what? A business contract, a simple uh, business plan, right? right? What I plan to do, I want to start my own trucking company. We just transport LLC. I want to start out with one truck. I want to do, so over the course of a year, I want to be able to take that one truck, flip over and turn it into two trucks, and then two trucks into four trucks, eight trucks, eight trucks, into 16 trucks, two trucks into 32 trucks, 32 trucks into 64 trucks, 64 trucks into 100. I see where I'm going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all see what I'm doing? I'm 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 looking at what building your your business what? Compound when you compound. All right, all right. Now I take my business plan, take my contingent contract, I go into the old Bank of America. To the talent has credit, whoever it is, walking and say, Hey, I need, I need, I need to get in the business loan to buy that truck. All right, well, Mr. Butler, let's take a look at what you got here. Uh, let's see, you know, business loan, you've been here at the bank now for, for about five, six years. You know, you've been doing business with us, you got the business account here, you got the great client. All right, that all looks good. I'm not getting credit's not so good. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Well, this credit's you no, know, and then you got a five eight gold. It's not terrible, terrible, but it's not. Great, great easy. What else do you have that can kind of, you know, offset, you know, that, that question? Well, I've got some contracts. Pardon me? i got some contracts <laughs> with shippers. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> okay. Y'all think that kind of outweighs the credit stuff? By far. <laughs> By far. Okay. Yes, it does. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's take a look at that. All right. So you, you go, oh, you got seven of them. Yeah. Right. Woo. FedEx. Woo. Amazon. Woo. Walmart. <laughs> Y'all think they kind of outweigh the credit stuff? By far, keeping it going. Exactly. So then, so I think you got a, you got a product here. I think you'd be interested. You ever heard of a revolving line of credit? Well, yeah. What, what is that? A credit card? That's exactly what it is. It is a business credit card. A business credit card. You've already demonstrated to us by your convenience that you will have in excess of more than a couple hundred thousand dollars in revenue generated by your business. Okay. In fact, looking at these contracts, if you just lend the three of these, you know, you're looking at probably close to half a million dollars in revenue, which will qualify you for. Two hundred fifty and five thousand dollars revolving around a print by half of your revenue. Now, with that being said, 
So we have a bottom line of credit report is this. You have a very low, what we call a interest only rate. We give you a $225,000 line of credit. Anytime you charge anything on that, it's just like you charge on, on your regular visa or anything else. Okay? You'll pay for it with your credit card, right? The amount of money you charge on your credit card, you can you can handle paying that two ways. You can pay the interest only, which means the balance will never go down. You never really pay that off, but you'll keep the credit card in good standing by just paying the interest off. Of that rate on the interest only part, only the 3.75%. Now, if you want to go ahead and try to pay off the balance, the principal itself, pay it off the principal, you have a principal and interest payment. Your principal and interest payments combined will equal to about what, nine and a quarter percent to so somewhere up to 13 to 14. Because y'all do know that that's how credit cards work, right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, if you're not charging anything on your credit card, that's what you gotta make a payment for. You don't have to make any payment. But the only time you make a payment towards your card is when you charge some money and you either want to pay the interest or you want to pay the principal and the interest. Now, if you are a business, a trucking company, let's say you want, you want to buy a truck with your business credit card, the truck is what? $130,000, $135,000. You charge that on your business credit card, you have $150,000, $125,000. So that, that leaves you with what? How much left on your credit card? Charge the hundred and thirty-five thousand. You got what? Close to what? Hundred and what? Over a hundred thousand still. Hundred and sixty, right? Mm -hmm. Got about a hundred sixty thousand dollars left on the car. Right? Now, because now there's two ways you can you can pay on that car. Because now, because the truck is what pay for, right? Right. Right. Because well, anything you buy with your credit card is yours. Pay for it, right? You just got to pay back the money on the card, right? But the item you bought is yours. It's being clear now, right? Right. right. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. So now, you go out and you buy yourself a brand new truck. You get the title to that bad boy. So, as far as Federal Motors Carriers, DOT, anybody else, that truck's paid for. It's yours. It's a free and clear asset on your company's books. You're paying back on your credit card. Right, what? Are you going to pay the principal and the interest or are you just going to pay the principal? Which one are you going to do? Interest right. only. Interest only. Why? Because you want the lowest payment possible, right? Oh, yeah. Exactly. Right. You pay that three and a quarter percent interest only. And on $135,000, that interest only payment is about what? The interest only payment, you got $135,000. How much is the interest? I have three and a quarter. Right. Buy that. Yeah. Remember I told y'all how you, I show y'all how you get $130,000, $150,000 truck and only pay what? $300,000 yes. to $600,000 a month versus $900 a week? Yes. Yeah. It is. Granted, you're not paying that off. You're just paying the interest on it, right? Right. You just keep that revolving. You just keep that you just in the interest. But that's what you want to do. Why? Because you're trucking the money, right? Right. 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 So, that means, so, so that means you're only paying $365 per month. So that means your old head just went, woo, right down to the bottom of the flow, didn't it? Yes. So now you can afford to do what? And what? A mile freight. Run that cheap freight. <laughs> you can run that cheap freight like I'm like, no. Right? 
You can now run cheap freight like it's gold. So in other words, you can use this to show uh, current drivers who are have this high overhead to restructure their uh, payments and everything for the trucks they have now. So what you all could do is you all could actually come up with some type of consulting, some type of consulting service where you would go in to owner operators and show them how to what you what how to reduce their overhead. Exactly. The overhead which would allow them to do what to run that right. lower freight. Bring in that lower freight and be and be more what profitable. Okay. Solve a problem. And you become Millionaires leave. But that's a huge problem, right? Off the, off the top of your head, how many owner operators you all know? How, how many owner operators do you know right now that you can go in and you can restructure their business and put them on something like this? Six. That's on that's on top of your head. Right? Yeah. That's what you that's what you know right now off the top of your head. If you put if you put together a business and you put together some type of promo, some type of branding, and you put it out on social media, how many did you can get to come over and take an interest in that thing? A <laughs> yeah. lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, look, y'all. Look, y'all. Now, now, with that being said, can you all come up with ways to make this, to monetize this? Where you basically say to them, and y'all follow me on this now. I can come into your firm, I can come into your trucking company and show you how to reduce your overhead so much, so much that you can actually afford to run a dollar mile freight. Here's the thing. In order for me to do that, I'm gonna need a contract with you. Right? First of all, the first part of your contract is this. I'm gonna need you to sign a contract and contract my dispatch firm. My dispatch service will be your dispatch <laughs> for a period of at least two years. Second thing, by however much money we reduce your debt, your overhead debt, and how much money we create, we increase your profits, your over your overall revenue, right? We're gonna need to be compensated 25% of that increase. So we're not taking money from you. We're only taking, we're only making money if we are increasing what your revenue. And we're only taking twenty five percent of that increase. Hmm. That sounds like a winner to you all. It does. Would it sound like a winner to them? Because if you're taking twenty five percent, that means that they're benefiting what from a seventy five percent increase. Right? Right. I just see when? I just see people being so confused, like what? Say that again. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But see, that's but that's where the breakdown comes. You gotta be able to break this down and show it to them on paper. You gotta be able to explain it to them. Okay. But remember what I see for every problem there is a solution. For every problem. Solution now. Is this going to help everyone to? Uh, is everyone going to be able to reach out to the business? No. Okay. But this is one. We just. I, I, what I've done is I've just shown you all that how you all can sit down and by combining you all's combined knowledge and different things that you know about, you know, about finance. So there's enough people with, within our platform that that, that uh, some of you already knew about revolving our credit, right? You already knew this. You just didn't know how to apply it to the trucking industry, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, just on that one thing there, on tackling that, everything on that list can be de-analyzed and approached 
And if you all take the time just to sit down and like you just really, I mean, really, really, really think about it, and you apply certain things, like I said, if the technology is there, if the will is there, if the means is there, you can apply those things you solve just about any problem out there. Is that the only way to solve that problem of cheap rate? No, that's not the only way. That's one way. Okay, and I and, and that that one right there was a gimme. Okay, that, that was a free one, right there. I just gave to y'all, okay? <laughs> now, there's another way that requires a little bit more uh, involvement of people with money, which we are working on, that we think is gonna change the industry forever and completely solve cheap rate, okay? Uh, and, 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 and I'm gonna go ahead and let this out the bag because you know, for anybody else that tries to jump onto it, tries to duplicate it, they're gonna be running so far behind, so it's not even funny. All right. <laughs> All right. Um flat. Y'all ever heard of that? <laughs> flat. What does that what does that do? Does anybody know what that flat does? Um they sell yes. insurance. Okay. To, um, they have a, but, they, but they have a unique product within within the insurance our ministry, right? It's not yeah. just insurance. What do they do? Well, I think they sell insurance to businesses. No, not just that. This is but it's something else, right? Mm, I don't know. It's insurance, but it's not insurance in the in the traditional sense. If you get sick and you can't meet your monthly bills, what does that like do? They reimburse you for uh, hospital bills and stuff like that. They cut you a check. They pay, you, they pay for your, you know what I'm saying? If you can't pay your bills, not the hospital bills, I'm talking about your regular bills, like your mortgage, your insurance, your car note, things like that. After that, we'll get that stuff for you. Right? Yeah, regular insurance don't do that, right? So, right. So y'all see what I'm saying? Affleck mm -hmm. has a they have a unique niche within the insurance um, industry, but it's not really insurance; it's assurance. Y'all get it? Mm -hmm. Affleck is not an insurance plan; it's an assurance plan. That's basically, what it is. It assures you. That when the time comes, if you get sick, if you get laid off, if you have a problem in making your monthly, you know, living requirements, they assure you that they will jump in and they will take care of that for you. That's mm -hmm. assurance, not insurance. Now, in 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 thinking along those lines, I think there's a you think there's a need or a way something like that could be implemented within the industry when it comes to cheap rate? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be lovely if you could grab freight that's paying dollar fifty, dollar sixty-five a mile, then after you ran and you dropped it, file a claim. Bring that up to dollars per mile. Get that check in a separate payment from your company. That balances that out for you after the fact. Yeah. I think that would solve a problem with cheap freight, or at least balance put people on a level playing field. Smaller trucking companies on a level playing field. They paid into some type of assurance plan, right? They paid into some type of assurance plan, and they had a certain premium uh, uh, that they had to meet. So they paid into a, 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 an assurance plan, let's say for a year, and once they hit their point of where they would be what? 100% vetted, right? Y'all know what vetted means? Y'all know what vetted means? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been it's been checked 
out. Some some type of due diligence has already been performed. Or exactly. This is Calvin with the RBS. Just just not understand. We're right in the middle of our Book and Pray from Home show. Um, would you mind giving us a call back in about oh, one hour? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so they pay into this plan like you do with any type of you know insurance or assurance plan before you can file a claim of 100 you gotta be in the plan for a certain length of time right 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 so let's say they let's say the time is one year or is that a certain dollar of a, you know, time or or dollar amount so let's say it's one year or let's say the dollar amount is 12 grand whatever case may be all right so you get into this plan you're paying you know 199 150 200 dollars a month whatever it is you're paying to you know to get that plan. Now, when you first start out, when you reach a certain level, you can do what's called at loan. When you get up to the 1%, you can go at levels. You can get up to where you can do a 30% claim, do a 60%, 90% claim, then 100%. Y'all see what I'm saying? But if you want to do a 100% claim, which covers 100% of the loads you take that are under 225 per mile, then they will pay them up to that 225 per mile, balancing you out, right? Y'all see how this would work? Yeah, so th that way um, the the owner op is is guaranteed no matter what, how, how far below the, the price of his freight is, he's, he's already guaranteed to have that price minimum. Being paid. Now that now there will be a bottom out cap. You can't go and take a load that's one penny per mile. <laughs> you know, you want me to take a you do have a we have a bottom out cap, which means you can't take a load that pays less than what? Dollar twenty-five. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But it allows them now to do what? To be able to pick up what? Run a certain percentage of freight that is they consider cheap in freight. So when they get in those situations, and then now you're not gonna want to do this all the time because you're gonna have a certain limit of how many of these loads you can run, you know, each quarter or whatever it may be, right? So it's not something that they're gonna want to do all the time. But when you get into a situation where you get stuck in an area and you can't find no freight out, it's not paying what you need to make the truck profitable, then you want to do what? You want to go back and file on your claim, right? Right. Because you, so then you have to worry about waiting for freight. It's going to pay what you want because you're losing money. So, well, you, I just go ahead and pay this one. I'm just low that's paying a dollar seventy five or a dollar and eighty or a dollar and ninety. Why? Because I can file a claim for it and get my extra what thirty five cent per mile or my extra twenty five cent. Or my extra 50 cent per mile, it's going to bring me up to what, $2.25. So then that load didn't cost me. I didn't get paid a dollar 35 cent. I got paid 25 cent. When you grab that load, I can run it. Because I'm going to get my dollar 75 when I drop the load, file my claim. A couple of weeks later, I'm going to get the additional amount that brought me up. Y'all see how that works? Yes. Y'all think there's a need for something like that? Yes. Look, I know my, I know uh, some of y'all saying, man, man, you know what? <laughs> Cam, you got too much time on your hands. <laughs> you think about it, you know, you, but, but that's what an entrepreneur does. And that's what I'm trying to get you all to. I'm trying to force you all to think like that. Because everybody says, oh, cheap rate, cheap rate is a problem, cheap rate is a problem, cheap rate, but you never heard anybody try to come up with a solution to it. Right? Not because there isn't a solution, because there is. The solution, there's a solution to every problem under the sun. But it takes people. It takes people of a certain mindset to actually sit down and try and tackle those things. I don't mean just think about it, I mean actually do it. 
make the contacts with the right people who can actually make this happen. And all to make stuff like that happen, you gotta have a lot of money behind your behind your up front, right? Because you can't implement something like this on a large scale without having a stockpile of revenue in reserves, right? Right. So who would you go to to get those reserves? Y'all think of someone within the industry who already has a ton of money that you can go to and they can implement this and be your partners in a phone. Think, come on, y'all. Think with it. Think with it. Don't tip your tongue. Come on. Who already operates within the industry that has a stockpile of money? A shipper? No. no. Factory companies. No. <laughs> that man, a, a Cuban cigar. Because <laughs> what do they do? They give you money up front and wait for the money on the back end, right? Right. What's insurance? What's insurance? What's insurance or assurance? You pay someone money just in case what? It happens. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right. Is that, is that not the biggest revenue generator on the face of the planet right now? The longest. You don't think company would be interested in that type of idea? It's kind of a mute point because I already know they are. <laughs> it's kind of a mute point because I already know they are. And we've already started working with um, three factory companies to implement this. And we'll be bringing this to the table. Um, we'll be bringing this to the industry here within the um, probably by this summer. By August, between August and September. But as I said to you all, is that the only way to no? Because the consulting side and consulting with these smaller firms is another good way to go. Okay. So now, do you all have a clear, clear understanding? of how you can go about tackling these problems, right? I know I said not, now I'm not gonna say here, we're not gonna go over all these, but I wanted to address that one because that was the biggest one. And I wanted to use that one as an example of how you all can actually put your heads together and work within the industry to solve problems. And if you can come up with solutions to those problems, it would make you a very wealthy person. Do you all see that? Yep. Yes. All right. So this, so look, I told y'all a long time ago. This, this network, this platform is, is about more than showing you all how to book freight. Our goal is to show you all how to become logistics entrepreneur, how to make money within the industry. Now, on the face of that, yes, it's booking freight, but also you got to, I mean, you got to learn to think deeper than that. You got to learn to expand yourself to areas within the industry that's going to take you way beyond just booking freight. Okay, way beyond just booking freight. This is not this is not your, your, your average freight broker training class or dispatch training class. We do that. We do that Monday, Tuesdays. Every Monday, Tuesday night, we have some type of dispatch or freight broker training, right? Every Wednesday night, we have Q&A, right? But when you all come to the Saturday show, we want to expand. Um, and, 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 and I told you all just at the beginning of, of this new year, our um, our new approach to our Saturday shows are going to be more about showing you all and helping you all develop your skill of becoming logistics entrepreneur, how to make money within the industry outside of just your regular booking freight and broker. Because if, because if you're going to have longevity, if you're going to go and become a Riacom or a Logistics or one of those companies that started with us and now they're on their way to becoming billion dollar companies, 
If you're going to be one of those, you got to learn to expand yourself beyond what you're currently doing. Do you all agree with that? Yes. Agree. Agree. Right. Yes. All right. So that being said, let's move on to our, that ends our show for the day as far as that part of it. Let's go to Q&A and questions and answers. Um, and it can be questions about what we just talked about. It can be questions about, you know, things that you've been having problems with, things that you want to know about, uh, just whatever. All right. So let's get ready. Uh, who wants to be the first up on the on the Q&A? We've got about time now. Yeah. Let me, let me take time real quick. Uh, it's 11, it. 40. so yeah, we got about 40 minutes to an hour, so let's, let's go with that. What's your question? Hey, um, I heard you mention on a, on a auto Holland videos, mm -hmm. uh, I know we need a, some of, some of the, one of the requirements for getting on the central dispatch is our own contract or agreement. And, uh, I mentioned you saying something about it being in the back office, but I don't, I don't, I don't see anything related to like a. Yeah, I've been trying to find our old agreement. I haven't been able to find it. That's why. Um, but I can go over from the, 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 the best way to find an example of one. You can either go to Central Dispatch, pull mm -hmm. up one of the companies that are that are posting loads, and and look at their profile. Okay. It's kind of, you know, mirror yours after theirs. Or okay. you can go to UShip, okay, pull up one of the companies that are on there who are bidding and look at theirs. Uh, okay. Uh, Damien. Is Damien on here today? Yeah, I was looking for Damien, but I couldn't find him in okay. the chat. Yeah. Uh, just go to the chat group and put in, uh, I'll type it in his name. And it, and it will pull up and you send him a message. Okay, yeah, I was trying to do that, but it never will pull up for me. I, I was like, is he in this chat? I don't know, but I don't think his name is Damien. <laughs> his name is Damien. Uh, I think in the chat group, his actual name is Darren. Okay. So you have to start typing in Darren and then it'll pull him up. Um, um, and his name is, I think it's Darren. <laughs> Another quick, quick, quick one, uh, Calvin. Uh, the P4L. Yeah, I was, that's looking at that. You still got that going? Yeah. Um, we just made it completely free, um, so anybody can go in and just start using it. And um, you know, if you want to send us the twenty-five percent, just do so. If you don't, we'll still, we'll still, we'll still get our percentage from the, uh, from the, uh, from the, from the cost Okay. Uh, but, and, uh, but but that's him right there. Let me see it. Let me see. I think it's Darren. I think it's Darren Stevens. Okay, Darren Stevens? Okay, yeah, I, I got you. Yeah. Uh, I got you. That's Thanks. what he's, but that's his Facebook name. Okay. Thanks. But yeah, uh, P4L, in case y'all didn't know, that's another company that my wife and I um, runs. Uh, partial less big pool prices out the big pool. Um, it's called P. L. Net. It's a uh, uh, it's an automotive parts brokerage firm. Is what it is, um, and and we created this so that you know that anybody that wanted to benefit from it because what it is is when you order parts from our suppliers you're getting about 70 percent off of brand new parts when you order from our new parts our supplier so if 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 if, if you're getting 70 percent off of retail that means there's some room for you to mark those bad boys up right you can mark them up 20 25 percent uh you can mark them up 50 percent and still save someone almost anywhere from 30 to 60 percent to 50% of what they would be at um, AutoZone. Um, you know, give y'all an example. Um, when you come in here, if you want to go to the back office area, just go to where it says uh, corporate offices only. A drop down is going to, to pull up. Go in there and click on where it says P4L Executive Back Office. 
click that, and then it'll take you into the back office area. Right, there it is. I'm going to take you into the P4L back office area. And there it is. Use and your That's going to be Transmission. Yes, well, I will tell you right now. Probably not gonna pull the transmission on your on your new car parts. Okay, you're gonna probably have to go through your used or rebuilt parts. Manufacturer. Alternator. All right, let's see. Uh, let's look up the vehicle. First of all, will I add a vehicle? Add a vehicle. On uh, what year model? Uh, 2010. 2010. Make. Mm, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. Model? Outlander. Sub model. ES, LS. Yeah. yeah. It automatically pulls up the engine. So there it is right there. Now you're going to browse for a part, right? Mm hmm. I'll pull up. There it is right there. 2000 Mitsubishi. You see it in alternator, right? Yes, sir. Later. Now, what does all this normally cost? Was anybody know for that? Vehicle. I'd probably about three to five, maybe. Right. Y'all want to test that? We're going to look up uh, AutoZone. That's going to be our, that's probably going to be the next competition for it. See y'all what we're looking at here. Price wise, AutoZone. AutoZone! Auto Park. <laughs> Auto zone, auto parks. And we were looking at a two thousand what? Had a vehicle. Looking at a two thousand ten. Yeah, two thousand ten Mitsubishi Outlander. Which one was it? Two drive. Yes. Yeah, two wheel drive. Uh huh. Four cylinder. That's right. All right. Vehicle price. Now, this is not that big of a difference. It's two seventy six, two twenty four. 
get your vehicle, get your vehicle. Right. We're gonna see what this is what the difference is. That's a Durant Gold new. That's a Dura, that's a Duralast remanufactured. You got a core 40 and a core 60. And y'all know what a core is. Yeah, you gotta add the core to it. Yep. All right. So this really, it's 300 something. Yeah. Now, this one is 466. This one right here has a cool three. Now, there's no, and that's why we built all these direct fit that we want to look for. All these direct, both have a lifetime warranty. They have a one year limited warranty. Have a lifetime warranty. I'm look for it if they are a direct fit. That's a remanufactured one too. So uh, that alternator is probably not a good one to compare. With the about uh, this one is going to be a lot less, but that is remanufactured. Now this one is also remanufactured. versus their remanufactured one is two point four. So they're about the same. Okay. But let's look up something like the uh, battery. Let's say ready. With their radiators running. You got performance radiators and you got radiators. Price. All right, 320, 321, 321, 321, 325, 256. Uh, looks like 256 is the lowest, right? And these must be Florida prices because they don't do it like that at AutoZone in Texas. 256. What's it cost in Texas? When I look up parts or something like that, maybe I see at least five hundred in the store right around the corner. Well, the great thing about this right here, see, all right, now, now, when you're looking online, basically what it's doing online is 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 trying to find something that's compatible with what we're already looking. So they're trying to match price, but as you can see here, the differences in something like a radiator. Is much different unless you're going to get something or so radios can be expensive for that vehicle if you're looking for something like a premium type of a performance um, type of radio. We just want, yeah, but if you just want, yeah, if you just want a regular radio, yeah, know, it's seventy bucks non-turbo, and that's a brand new part. Right, ain't nothing turbo on that kind of car, so. No, no you can go up in there, and that's his best match. You can go up in here and you can click where it says, uh, click it, and then go down and go from low to high. Figure the lowest price for this and what he's with the highest price. But, I mean, you could make some, I mean, you could, you, you could really compete with some of the big, you know, store brands and, and anything that you order through this shipper, this this supplier, anything over fifty dollars is free ship. Mm. And it usually ships within the same day or the next day. So it's not going to take a whole lot, you know, you know, a long time to 
to get to where we get on where it's going. You know what I'm saying? So, but they could probably walk in the auto zone and say, hey, I want a radio, and they probably went back and get one. But is that worth the extra what? On the lowest end right here, what, 321? Yeah, more than likely, the auto zone, they have to ship that too. They just don't have them on hand like that. Yeah. Like this right here, these are not store pickup. Like, right. All these are shipped to your home. Right. So, chances are they've got to ship them too. I don't see any of these where it says store pickup. Okay. So, off rip, you're looking at on the lowest one is two fifty six. Lowest ones over here is seventy dollars and fifty one cents. Then you got one over. Then you got this one. $5. So, if you have, a, have someone who's looking for a part, they call you up or and this works best with shade tree mechanics. Yeah. Okay? So if you're going to shade tree, if you're going to approach shade, shade, shade tree mechanics, hey, I got a source where I can get you some parts, you know, pretty cheap. Because what shade tree mechanics do, them, what eats into their money is what? The part. What? So they got to go down to auto zone or you know auto parts warehouse or you know, or just wherever they're going to get it. It's costing them more money, right? If right. they can get it, they can get it from you. They can get this from you for a hundred and fifty versus getting it from the what's called at two fifty six. You know what I'm saying? Or if you just told them, yeah, it was one hundred seventy. You make a hundred dollars on that. Or if you tell them it's one hundred fifty. I mean, you're making about, you're doing about 140, uh, you're doing 100, 110 percent longer, right? Right. Yeah. And they can mark it up on a customer if they want to and still save the customer money. Yeah. You know, all you got to do is just have a drop chip right to it. They pay you, you order, ship it right to their shop. Or right to the house, wherever it is, you know. It is, they're working on cars that. So, um, to give you an idea of, of how to save me money, uh, personally, uh, let me look at my vehicles. I did one on my Cadillac. Um, I went to the um, Cadillac dealer last week, well, a couple of weeks ago, and they told me I needed a catalytic converter. Okay. What's that? Uh, what's my vehicle? Uh, that vehicle. I can't like this for two thousand. Uh, I need They told me I needed a catalytic converter. Now. They told me the catalytic converter was eleven hundred bucks. At the dealership. It was eleven hundred bucks and five hundred bucks to put it on, so about sixteen hundred dollars all together. It was gonna be. Right? And they said I needed the front passenger side. I think this is what I need. The right side, what I think. It's one that looks like this. It's got all the stuff on it. It was the main flow, direct fit. I think that was the passenger side one. It was the one that looks like, you know, they had, they had the whole thing on it. Like, you know, this right here. I remember it was when I, when I looked it up. And, but any of these are going to be a lot less than what they told me. Well, they told me it was 1100 bucks. So I'm like, yeah, let me check my sources. Because when I looked it up, I wound up getting a thing for 258. 
is what I wind up getting for. And um wind up, you know, taking it out to him and say, hey, not one is cheap, but it's like 258, but it was. But it wasn't one of these, it was one of the um the full scale ones. One like I believe it was this one right up here. It was down here for like two nine. But their prices will change from time to time. But um, it was a direct fit, but I think this was it right here. The luminized steel, yeah, this is it right here. It was a, a direct fit right there, is what I was looking for. A direct fit for that car. Um, and it was right here with all the rings and stuff on it. So, it was two, nine, three. But I had another, I believe it was. That's what it was. Um, but you can see how this can save you some money. Someone goes to like a car like dealership and you tell them it's, you know, it's eleven hundred dollars. What you call it? Like what? You know, they're gonna freak out, right? Then they see your little ad or whatever you got going on. I get to you for you know four fifty or five hundred. <laughs> If they've been told eleven hundred, and 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 you tell them I can get it for you for for, for five hundred brand new direct fit with a five year fifty thousand mile warranty. Same day ship, one business day. <laughs> Who you think they're gonna go with? Wrong with you. Exactly. Now, um, I'm gonna be honest with you. This. This this business right here is what got me out of the homeless shop. I started this way back when I was in the homeless shop. Um, this is what I was doing. I was you know, put a little ad out, I put a little video up. You know, people just started calling. Hey, I need a part. 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 And this got me out of the homeless shop and got me to my first apartment. I'm out of the homeless. Um, I'm out of the homeless shop. So it's a pretty good business. Um, Something they do, and this is a gimme because I've got a back end deal with the manufacturer. So when you click on this stuff and you go and order it, you know, they're gonna, uh, and they, I think they pay us 20 to 25 percent on the back end. When we were doing this, um, as a P4L, um, you know, thing all together, we were getting 25 percent on the back end, and we were um, asking that you all do this and you make money and just sell us 25 percent of your. Um, 25% of your product because it's a free business. It's free. Any of y'all don't want to use it or try it, it's just a free business. Hey, hey Calvin. Yeah. Damien. Um, actually, my first time I'm going to go to my Instagram. This is Damien. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the YouTube channel. I'm going to go to the YouTube channel. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he's like a sponge. He, he went off. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, how many parts have you got already? Um, I mean, I don't remember. I have a customer in New York. They ordered for me three times already. Um, find a member who ordered. Um, I'm looking for an engine later on. I can't do it today. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, look, people look at you know, the there it is. I've already built a website for you. make use about the dispatch. If they you can kind of hear yours with I'm I'm on the um the group in the in the office with my business. But yeah, yeah, you can contact me. It's no problem. All right, all right, y'all. But as y'all know, that's how we work. I mean, we're a networking you know, group, so the whole point of that is we are in that group. Hey, Kevin, yeah. I already completed um six transactions already from for uh, my last one today. Hey, look, I told y'all if if, if y'all not doing all the things we show how to do, well, y'all wrong, 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 wrong. Because <laughs> um, if, if you get that doing that thing right, that's it's not hard. 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 I mean, just starting, it's going to be a little bit difficult because you're a new provider. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, because you don't have a race, um, you know, they'll say it's not hard. 
I have a question. Yeah. So um, I'm brand new. So um, I've heard auto hauler a couple of times during uh, some of the, the trainings. Mm -hmm. So do I need to have experience first just without being, going auto hauler? No, you don't have to experience, but make sure you go back and watch all of our auto hauler videos. A certain way you do it, a certain strategy to it. But if you try to do it, if you, if, if you try to do it, you don't know, have a strategy, you just have to change the wheel. Right there. Yes, sir. Yeah. All you really have to do is not your own research. Um, uh, right at the moment, carry tents don't go up in the cold air. So exactly. You have to be careful of the beds that are up in the cold air. Exactly. That's what they must get south to south. Because those guys are used to, you know, 100, 175, 200, maybe 300 dollars. You're talking about the north. It was originated from, 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 from the northern area. Those guys used to work. Right? Yeah. Because I, 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 you, you make that happen. The guys was on the street. Because I actually have a client, a driver as well, in clothes, and I got started and I got him on the lottery. Um, so I always got to go and talk to him. Now look, right now, you see it. It's not like your first battles, you don't know what the ratings on you should, you're not going to have any ratings yet. Right? But this is why the strategy is you look for no less than $1,800. And then you cut it in half. Because a lot of times that they cut, you have more than a rating. Than you're like you know what I'm saying? And that's, what, that's what's going to issue you. Get uh, what happens is you get on U-Ship. Uh, hold on now. Excuse me. Go a different browser. U-Ship. What happens is um, when you're on um, U-Ship and you all know it, you you all know what you ship is, right? Does everybody know what you ship is? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. So when you're on you ship, it's basically just a hub where people come and they post stuff and they're trying to get the cars moved or they're just whatever they're trying to get moved. Um, you want to stick with cars and light trucks and things and that. All right. Um, Uh, I could. Uh, no. Come on. I, I can't. I can't remember my login. I'm not even gonna try to log in. But um, and basically, what you're gonna be doing is when you go to YouTube, you're gonna be doing it as a carrier. That's basically what you are doing. It. So you're actually looking for. The uh, stuff that you're gonna move, okay? So you're gonna be doing it as a carrier. Uh, come on. Now, it, now, if you are a broker, go ahead and click broker, okay? Um, now you are not a shipping customer. So you you either gonna be a carrier or a broker. Jamie, how did you sign up as a broker? No, I signed up as a um as a carrier. Carrier, okay, yeah. Um, but that's how you um you're gonna sign up as a um, carrier or a what you call it? I'm trying to get my my what you call it page here. Give me some. Uh, it's not pulling up on this computer, and I, and I and I honestly don't remember my login. I really don't. I, I got so much stuff up, stuff up in my head. Um, uh, how can I uh, I'm not gonna be able to remember it. Don't think I'm gonna be honest, man. All right, let's see. Uh -huh. See if it's gonna be. See if I can remember. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> um, uh, 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 let's try.
nope, that's not it. Either. I can't remember what my login is. I have to I have to look it up and and and, and on, on on my other computer because on that computer it's stored in or, or it's on a different browser. You check this browser. Let me check this browser. I know it's on my other computer. I don't know what. I don't know. That's not on this. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go. Let me try this. I did. Yeah. Still not sure about what you're going with. I'm not gonna be able to remember. Ah. Now I just want me to click it. All the things they have to bust. I hate this. I really do. I really do. I can't get in. I don't, I don't know my password. What happened to any of that? But um, uh, the way you can go in and kind of look at stuff without actually um, find shit. Let's try. Sometimes I think it will let you go in and actually look at it. Yeah, it does. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, all right. Basically, what you're doing with your ship is this: you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna and you're gonna put it in your category, um, vehicle and boats. You put it in light cars and trucks. And basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for all the ones that has a that has a um, what's called of 1800 or better. Okay. Like, here's one from Orlando, Florida. It's a Dodge Charger. It's going to Ontario. Is that Canada? No. Yeah, that's Canada. Yeah, that's yeah, Canada. Like it. All right, so it's going to Canada. Now, you may want to bid on that. You may not want to bid on that. But it's at a high enough so when you can, but you just got to find a carrier that's going up that far. All right? I wouldn't. Okay? I just would, okay. Um, I would come on down, and what I do is this: you gotta stick to your your strategy, okay. You're gonna be tempted to say, "Well, let me look at some ones that's no, I'm not seeing anything that's saying 1800, so I'm gonna look for something that's um, that's that's saying 1500 or 1400." I don't do that, okay. <laughs> Damien probably done got all the good ones. I mean, here anyway. But I'm looking at some of these 1400s and what's got, he probably bidding on those. Now, here's one right here. Um, now, that's going to Alaska, y'all, right? No. I don't know if I want to bid on that one either. All right, here's one. Where's that going? Washington. All right. Here's one you could bid on. All right. Now, the reason why you want to cut this in half, you want to, so the last bid was 21. $92,192, all right? Most of the people that are bidding on this stuff, they're hot shots. That's why they have to keep the bid so high. Because they're only going to put maybe one or two cars, you know what I'm saying? And they need to make their money. But you all are going to be signing up with both U-Ship and Central Dispatch. But that means you all have the access 
to the larger carriers have, you know, nine, 10, and 11 car hauls, right? You, you, know, you have the seven, nine, and 11 car hauls. They can put up to 11 cars on their trailer. And these carriers that you all have access to, they're always, you know, in route. So basically what Central Dispatch is doing is when you post something on Central Dispatch, it's gonna put it in front of the carriers who are in route that's gotta pass by your pickup point and your drop is going to the same place that they're dropping to or your drop is on the way to where they're dropping to. You all understand what I'm saying? And these carriers usually have one, two, sometimes three slots open on their truck. Now, if you got a carrier that's going from, where we at here? Let's say from Miami, Florida, which means he's got to come past Homestead, right? Right? Right. So you, so you may have several, if not 10, 15, 20 carriers that are leaving from the Miami, the, you know, the, uh, what's the other area down there? Skane, you know, all those. All those areas down there, they're leaving from, from, from that area, so they got to go by Homestead. And they may be heading up towards Washington or to Washington or somewhere. I can't imagine anything up past Washington, but <laughs> they, they're heading up that way, right? Now, they may be like a 11 car hauler or a nine car hauler, and they may have five cars on their truck, or an 11 car hauler, they may have nine cars on their truck which means they got two slots left, right? The the vehicles that they got on their truck already, if they're leaving to coming from the Florida, if they're, if they're leaving from the South, chances are not gonna be more than $300 per car is what they're being paid. Right, Darren? I'm sorry, I, was, I had you muted. Um, I mean, yes, that's, cor that's correct. Yeah, chances are they're not gonna be paid more than, you know, of the cars that they already have on their trailer, chances are that they're not making more than three hundred, maybe four hundred dollars per car. Going up towards Washington, it may be five hundred, you know, six hundred. You understand know what I'm saying? But that's going to be about the most going, you know, that they're going to have on their uh, per car. So you got something here that says twenty one ninety two was the last bid. So you're going to be at what? You're going to cut down the half. You're going to be at what? About a thousand nine, right? Right. About eleven hundred bucks is what you're gonna be. In. Why? Because you're gonna knock all this other riffraff out the way. And the person who posted that is gonna say, "Wow, he just cut that in half." Now, why would they dump on your bid versus what the other? Because because everyone else is just knitting that. This is why you want to cut it in half. Look, you don't want to come in and say, "Well, I'll be it uh, two thousand. No, because that's what everybody else is doing. And that's what's got them, and, and, and the person that's posted it, all you're doing is you're just promoting them to just sit there and, you know, look at bids. So they're just nit because they're nitpicking. So if you come in and you just off rip, just cut the head off and take half of it off, then they're going to like, whoa, let's go with this guy. Mm -hmm. You all see what I'm saying? Because yes, if you look at these other bids, let's look at all the other bids. Let's look at all the other bids. And you'll see what I mean. It's just been nitpicking. It's just been nitpicking, 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 nitpicking. All right? Because where the bids at? Uh, uh, where the quotes? You know, right here. These are the quotes. Y'all see right here? It started out at what? Y'all see all these quotes? It started out at 3960. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it has been nitpicking. Somebody came in and knocked off what? 600 bucks. Somebody came in and knocked off what? 200 bucks. Somebody came in and knocked off what? 50 bucks. Somebody came in and knocked off like eBay. Bucks. Somebody came in and knocked off another 100 bucks. And another what? Like, two bucks. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. So all the, the person that posted, they just gonna sit back and just, you know, watching the things just get dwindled down. Dwindled down. They ain't no hurry because they just watch the bids right now. Right. But if you come in and you just take that from that right there, and you knock off a thousand dollars, you cut that bad boy in half, you got their attention. 
and you knock all this riffraff out of the water. Y'all see the strategy? <laughs> yeah, you just turn dry to juicy. Exactly, juicy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now, chances are you're going to win that beat, even if you don't have any ratings. Okay, because, you know, these places got ratings. See here? They got a, a four star rating. This one has no rating, new service provider. So if you're going to be a new service provider, but you need a new service provider to come here trying to nick it. You're a new service provider that's trying to gain some business. So you're going to come in and you're going to put feet, you're going to put feet to the road, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to come in and you're going to drop feet back down to the road and say, hey, let's make this thing happen. Put up a shut up. I'm, I'm just taking off 1100 bucks. I'm dropping this thing down to eleven hundred dollars. Who wants to play? You see what I'm saying? So you come in, let them know you mean business, because you are new, right? So you're gonna be right here with this new service provider, but you ain't gonna be like this job right here. They're not not what forty one dollars, right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you ain't gonna win no, you ain't gonna win no deal like that. So you're gonna knock off a thousand dollars off rip. $1,092, you're going to make $1,100 off rip. That means the post is going to be forced to deal with you. Like, whoa, that's, uh, I don't think we're going to get much lower than that. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and, grab, this, let's go ahead and grab this guy right, right here. All right. Then, now, now that's, going to prompt, that's going to prompt some questions, so be ready for it. But how can you do this for $1,100? Because <laughs> my service is a premier service, and we have access to more than 1,000 carriers that are running these routes all the time. And because of my premium access, I can get one of them to put your vehicle on their truck at a greatly, greatly discounted rate. So that's what so that's exactly what you do, right? Right. You're not lying to them. Just go ahead and tell them what you do. I'm not gonna tell them where you do it at, but you're gonna tell them what you do. <laughs> right, right. Now, so you gotta win this bid, right? Now you're gonna take this, you're gonna post it on where? Central Dispatch. How much you gonna post on Central Dispatch for? Because remember, you got eleven hundred to play with. But what are you gonna post on Central Dispatch for? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Right? Why are you posting so? Why are you, why are you putting so much into it? Because you gotta go all the way. Exactly. And chances exactly. are, those carriers that are going up that way, they got nine cars on their eleven car trailer right now at what five hundred dollars a car. Mm hmm. Right? Or a four hundred dollars car. So you gotta tell them I pay you seven hundred dollars to kind of pull off the road into homestead on your way up there, grab this car, you make a, you put another seven hundred dollars in your national bank to head on head on to where you're going. But this is on your way. See what I'm saying? So that's what mm -hmm. this dispatch does. When they put this out there, the carriers that are already got this in their route, going to wherever they're going, they're gonna contact you and say, hey. I want that. That's pretty much how it goes right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually emailing my client right now to let him know the, um, <laughs> the carrier that's picking up his car. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, so, so you see, so, so y'all see how that works? Now, when the carrier picks it up and he drops that, then that money is already collected by YouTube. It is in the escrow account. That gets released when, there. Uh, it, it'll get released the next day. Within um, 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, and I, of the I'm assuming it's, it, it depends on your bank, I'm assuming. Yeah, so depending on your bank, you know, you got to put in your bank, it's going to be available in, in your account within 24 hours. And then you can go ahead and pay what? The care. Love Money it. made. Because you have $1,100, you, you paid out the carrier $700. What's, what's it going to leave you there? 400. 400. And you ship is going to get what? 15%. But they're going to take that off of when you post it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So but they're going to show to the, that the, so it's not really, it's going to affect you, but it's really not. Still so work. Still profit. Exactly. Now, if the carrier, now you can't find someone to pick that up, what, what happened there? You know what, man? I go on the internet and search for carriers. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had that happen? Help <laughs> you ever had that happen? Because, because look, he is innovative. He is forward thinking. Yeah, right. this carry I have this load I have I actually have it for a week now, and because the thing is, no one really want to go south, um, California, and it's coming out of Illinois. So I go. had it for a week, and see, I got the call yesterday with a yeah. But see, but see, but see, you didn't you didn't take my advice and stay away from those loads that originate up north, did you? Well, you know what? Because it was so good. <laughs> and the, the thing is, the client, he was flexible because I, I, I read his, um, you know, his yeah. notes and he was flexible. So, yeah. you know, and I, and I keep in touch with him to let him know what's going on. So. <laughs> you got tempted. You got tempted. But, <laughs> yep. but have you delivered that load yet? That's the one that's picking up today. Oh, so you finally got it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm picking up today. <laughs> you, were, you, you were sweating up on the way. Yeah, I, I actually was, man. But, um, yeah, the guy called me last night. It was three trucks and it's two yeah, trucks and it's going up. So, but, yeah. But, but, you, but you see why I would say kind of shy away from those loads um, that originate. Yeah. It, it, what I kind of find out, the, the carriers, the reason is they'll get good pay good going in, but they don't get pay good coming out. Exactly. But if you stick to south to south, you just run both yeah. That's why I tell you, I'll try to stick to south to south. Try to stick to stuff that's leaving out of Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, you know, those type of areas. They're, on, they're below that, you know, they're on the bottom half of the United States. And, hey. and, it, it, is that just in the winter or just period? Nah, just year round. Period. Year round. Year round. Um, Calvin. Yeah. What I did, my uh, my second dispatch that I did, the carrier, he actually runs, you know, California, um, North Dakota. So what I do now, I start looking for load going his lane. Exactly. So whenever I find something, I call him. Exactly. So that's something you guys want to do and exactly. ask the carrier what's his lane. Yeah. You, you got to connect with, with yeah. certain people and kind of build up your network. Now, look, I I have gone on here and I have I have I have bid it on a hundred lows per day. At the height of when I was doing this, sometimes I'd be posting 40, 50 lows on Central Dispatch a day. And I was delivering on about 90% of them. The other 10%, I couldn't find anything for it. I just paid a little fifteen percent. So if you don't find a, a load, I mean a pay, carrier, what you happens? Pay, you pay fifteen percent to um, you ship. Kind of like a, it's kind of like a restocking fee. Yes. Yeah, so what what they'll do? They'll, um, they'll take right. it from your whenever you post a load, they'll just charge you a higher, yeah. um, a higher percentage. They, they just charge it on your um, next bid. Yeah. Okay. And they're charging on your next bid. But look, it all comes down to watch them. Because if you post 20 loads and the five don't get picked up, but 15 do, you see what I'm saying? And you're averaging what, two, three hundred dollars on each on each one of those, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. 15, that fifteen percent ain't that fifteen percent ain't nothing compared to what you need. So this is what I mean when I tell you all we have a strategy to tell you all how to, how you can do a thousand dollars a day moving all the halls. Now, before we started doing this, nobody was doing it like this, right? So Darren probably tell you when he first started, it was like, woo, <laughs> taking, taking care of him a baby, right? <laughs> but yeah, definitely. It's, gotten a, it's gotten a little bit more competitive, and, and like yeah. when I was like when I first started, nobody was doing. It. Don't, don't ask me why. I don't know how. I don't know why they. Had, no one had figured it out. But I figured it out. So I, I was doing it. Just. I have a question for you, Calvin. Yeah. Um. That that load you were just looking at. I did see it before. The reason why I didn't bid on it, the one that's going to Washington from Homestead. Yeah. Because it's a non-running vehicle, and I try to stay away from those because. Yeah, because you know, carriers guys don't want to deal with because because they gotta have a yeah. way of getting it up on their trailer. Yeah, and chances are if they've got cars on the trailer already, that means they got to take pretty much all the cars off, mm -hmm. put that one on last, or put it on first. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So they can maybe get the other cars off. 
Okay, okay. All right. So, I stay away from them. So. Yeah, because I mean, instead of taking it down to get another car off, that means every time they got to have a way of putting that car down and taking it back up there so it doesn't run. Time consuming. Yeah. So that's a good point. Okay. Uh, uh, condition X on the operator, which means it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't run. Yeah, always look for that. Whenever yep. you guys book it, always look if the vehicle is running. Yep. Yep, little little key points, things there, okay? But um, you can go through here and you can just cherry pick. Uh, like I said, I always, I, I pick 1,800 is the, um, is my cutoff on being on anything that's less than 1,800. Okay? I, I mean, I just don't. I was going to Minnesota. Uh, it's two vehicles, okay. Uh, that would probably work because if you got a transport, you got two slots available. Just slide it in there. You see what I'm saying? Um, then what's what's going on that? Well, that was Florida. <laughs> so then we go to Georgia. <coughs> go to Georgia. <coughs> Look for the ones leaving out of Georgia. And you just go and just and just both the states. <coughs> you looking for the um uh, eighteen hundred or more. This one right there. Uh super duty. That's a big one now. <coughs> That's super duty. Daily. Yeah, so that's a dually. So that means that usually takes up a space and a half. <laughs> the trailer's got to have at least two spaces available to fit that bad boy, right? Right. So just kind of keep, just kind of keep that stuff in mind. Just, just common sense stuff. Um, that's going to Ontario, Canada again. Now, if you can find you a carrier who runs that route, <clears throat> by all means, move some of that stuff to Canada. Okay. You, have, you do have carriers that run those routes from, from Savannah to Toronto. But you have a lot of people trying to, you know, that are relocating up, up to Canada. <coughs> Here's one right here from Augusta to Montana. Suburban. It's 2150. Is that it for the Georgia runs? Yeah, that's it for the Georgia and you just you just go from you know what's called what's called now you know you know what you know what would be great if they just had a map where you could where, like when you do the the the, uh, the the load maps on the other load boards pick on it and tells you how many vehicles they got that are leaving out of each state. That would be great. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, hey, Texas. We got even out of Texas. <clears throat> What's leaving out of Texas, y'all? All right. <clears throat> 99 results leaving out of Texas. Let's do this. Number of quote offer price. Let's check about the offer price. We click that up and down. We ask price first. Now we're talking. <laughs> Y'all see what I did? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Because you want to deal with the higher price quotes. That's what you want to deal with. Here's one from, from El Paso to Massachusetts. <clears throat> Vehicles. Got, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Be it on that. Here's another one from Abilene to Washington. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a pretty good one. So that is Grand Cherokee. One vehicle. Check to see if it's running though. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's another one. Oh, that's hold up. Is that the same one? Yeah, they posted it twice. Yep. You sure did. Mm. Got two different date ranges. One in bed on both of them. Cut them in half. <laughs> <laughs> Cut them in half. Uh, love it. The New York. That's okay. You got to get a carrier that really takes time into New York, though. But, but, it, but it could be Depending on where is Beamer's point, it might be like, you know, not in the city. Which, which going up, up, to, up to New York is great when you're not going into the boroughs or, <laughs> you know, or the actual city of New York. Uh, here's one from Vermont going up, up from uh, Texas going to uh, up to New York. That's a good one too. Um, Kevin, um, how would we go about? Um, because I noticed some some shipper they put you know they'll have an extra five hundred pounds in the car. How do we go about that? Do we try to bit more based on because you know they're putting weight in the car? Well, why are they putting weight in the car? I'm, I'm not sure, but I know on YouTube there's a. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I noticed that too. I guess the. I guess they, if they're packing the car with stuff, yes, you know what I'm saying because they're moving, and it cuts down on them. <laughs> you know they, they get, get two birds one stone. The packing stuff in the trunk, packing stuff in the back seat. You, I mean, you know what I mean? Correct. Or I can't see that they would just be putting weight in the car to because of safety reasons to help the car stay on the trailer. That's that wouldn't be a what's called. It's got to be that they're because they're, because you know. It's personal items. Yeah, 95% of all of this is people just move. You know, they want to get their car. So it makes sense for them to put other stuff in the car. If the car is going to be moved, well, let's get some other stuff transported too. I haven't put it on this dog on a moving truck. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So that would make sense. Um, uh, yeah, I just don't want it to be a problem with the... With the carrier. You know, with a carrier. Yeah, a carrier know. sometimes look at it as yeah, this weight. But then the way I handle that, that's why I'm paying you so much money. Okay. Because you're usually paying them more, almost sometimes three times more than what they have on the truck already per, uh, okay. per vehicle. Right? Right. Like, like this right here, uh, 2300 bucks, right? If that's a, you know, you know, or, or $2,000 and you're paying a thousand, you know, let's say a thousand twenty or a thousand thirty, normally they're probably getting at, at, at best, they're getting what? Maybe $500 to go from Texas to New York per car on the cars they already got on their thing, right? At best. Chances are they're around 300, 250 to 300. So you're giving them, you know, if if, if, if you're going to go in here and you're going to put 700, you know, on that bad boy, you know, you are already twice as much as what they normally get. So if it is some extra weight, just, yeah, that's why we're paying you so much. Now they say, well, I'm already getting close to that now. I say, well, what were you thinking? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I handle it. Well, what were you thinking? Well, you know, if I can get an extra hundred dollars, I can't do a hundred, I'd be I can get extra fifty. You see what I'm saying? Because you cause you cause you got room. You know? I mean you I mean I mean you're still three hundred bucks up, right? Oh, uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's still quite a bit of stuff. In it. And, and, and like I said, we just covered what? Three states? And we've already found what? At least eight, nine, ten, or, or at least seven that, that you could rightfully, you all could rightfully be it on, right? Mm hmm. So you all can see how if you work this U chip central dispatch uh, strategy, we'll show you how to work it. You could, uh, you know, you know, and and this is something that we normally turn the brokers on to that are, are that have come to our platform and, and they haven't you know signed on any shippers yet. We usually turn them on to this because this is how they can make money their first year because 
normally your first year is your broker. You ain't, I mean, you ain't gonna sign this shit. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. you. I mean, you may sign, you may, you might, might. And that's a big might. You might sign a, a one or two small shippers, you know, something like that. But that's a very big might. That's why these uh, first year broker firms have such a high turnover. Rate. So they jump into this game and they think it's and they think it's a game. <laughs> they really do. They don't be thinking this is a game. And they realize this is real life. You know, I mean, shippers don't want to sign you. You got to make that eight hundred thousand dollars of you know every quarter on your bond payment. You got to make that three hundred twenty dollars uh, payment on your insurance every month. <laughs> you know, you still you know you you bleed. You know, you bleed, and you're not making it any money. So when brokers um, come in, this is. So we tell them, hey, watch those, um, watch our U ship central dispatch um, um, videos and watch them at least two or three times. And, and once you get that down, jump on this strategy. So, this is a way that they can pretty much guarantee themselves, you know, if and if they are real aggressive, they can do a thousand dollars. I mean, if you're real aggressive, if you're really, really aggressive at this, there were periods when I was doing three, four thousand dollars per day. You're being real aggressive. You just if you know, you're making bids on a hundred, you know, things a day, and you're posting, you know, twenty-five, fifty a day. So you're being real aggressive now. You're gonna be really, really busy because your phone's gonna always be ringing. You're gonna be always be trying to keep stuff, you know, distance-wise. You're gonna always be trying to. So arrange this, 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 and that, and you gotta pay this person, that person, that person. But hey, that's what you got. That that's why you came into this because you want it to, to be what really, really busy, right? Right, busy make money. Right, All right. There's old saying that's going around on Facebook. It said, "Ladies, if you, you know, not, I'm not trying to be showing this, but guys too, but mostly you say, ladies." If you want to, um, 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 what, 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 what's the thing you say? If you want to. About the business plan. No, there, there, there's a little Mimi that we got around. Uh, um, if you want a man with money, you got to put up with a busy man or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. If you want you, you, you a man with money, you, you ain't going to have a man with time. Yeah. You want time, you're gonna have a man with no job but broke. Yeah, there's something that said, yeah, there's something that said, no, yeah. oh, oh, I got that. If you don't want a broke man, you gotta put up with a busy man. That's it. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. the thing. If you don't want a broke man, you gotta put up with a busy man. So, you know, gonna be busy, <laughs> but you ain't gonna be broke. <laughs> I tell you that much right now. You know, if you start doing this and you get busy, you ain't gonna be broke. Right there, that's why Darren was late today because he was busy. <laughs> so, 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 if y'all need a loan, y'all know where to go. <laughs> Darren <I'm> always busy. <laughs> hey, man, I babysit. I do all of it, man. <laughs> okay, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, take advantage of some of this stuff. I mean, we share a lot of great stuff. We, we really do. Okay, we share a lot of great stuff on how to um, keep y'all's pockets filled. And keep you all busy uh, doing stuff within the industry. And the, the more work you're doing, the more you're learning, and the better you're becoming at what you do. And you're building a reputation at the same time. Because the more of these you do, guess what? Your ratings are going to go up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Okay? And once you get those ratings um, and everything, and people see your ratings, they see you cutting things ahead, and they say, oh, well, shit. Oh, these, let's go with these guys. Oh, these guys. Let's go with these guys. And it doesn't take long to start getting ready. I mean, I mean, you do, you know, what two two transactions, and you're gonna get rated, right, Darren? Yes. Um. Yes, I have two. I actually had two two cancellation. The reason is because those guys couldn't wait, and I actually had the carrier for the vehicle, and they canceled. So. Um, yeah. That did go against me, but you know it's going back. Yeah, up. Sorry, back to time you scheduled it. Uh-huh. yeah. Somebody they canceled. They call you back and try to reschedule it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't happen, <laughs> man. I, I, I didn't even bid on that car again. I just leave it alone. I went back and saw it posted, and 
I saw guys bidding on it for a high price. I just say, you know, I'm not even going because the guy, you know, he was a little bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but but it was, but, it was all but, good. I mean, I mean, you run into. I mean, I mean, it's business. Yeah, you can always run into something. Yeah, just keep on doing what you're doing. All right, all right. Any more questions? Questions. Callum, questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Okay, when joining Central Dispatch, can you join with your EIN number, or do you need your business license? Um, it's ideally preferred that you would put have all your stuff together. And the reason why is this. Um, you want to have it all together so the more stuff you have, the less questions they can ask you. Right there? Yeah, that's right. Um, I didn't, they didn't ask me much question because I had my website. I had everything up, really. Matter of fact, Darren, what's your website? Uh, share it to uh, me. Share, um, share it on the link here real quick. Okay. You want me to type it in or? Yeah, just type it into the chat. Okay, I'll do that. Pull it up for everybody. Uh, and look, if you've got your website put together nicely and your website explains your business uh, profile and it's showing you all your all your your credentials and stuff, then they're not going to ask you any questions. Now, if you if you're just someone who has a Facebook page, chances are they're going to quiz you like crazy. Uh, well, well, how long have you been doing this? Well, uh, what do you do? What's your um, what's your um, you know, what's your state license number? You know, all, all kinds of stuff, right? All right, here's Darren's website right here. I'm gonna go ahead and post this. Show you all what we're talking about here. I'm gonna have your stuff already. All right. All right, this is website. So when you build your website, you want your website to basically tell your story. Basically, you know, re 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 reflect that you are professional at getting these cars moved and stuff done within, you know, in, in a good time and fashion. I can see here his, his website is DZR Logistic Transport LLC. Pick it, secure it, run it. I like that, there. I like that. I okay. like that. All right. Our services, freight dispatching services, specializing in finding the freight that you want for the rate that you need it. How much money do you need to move your truck? Y'all remember that? Just let us know how much CPM you need, and we will ensure to find it and more. Have a relationship with brokers and shippers and help in this regard, along with several low board resources. And it sounding good for me, up to you all. We assist with carrier packing completion, even and verifying rate confirmations and even invoicing for you if you like that service as well. Auto transportation services. Now y'all see what he did? He didn't build a website that specifically concentrated on just auto transportation or dispatching or whatever it may be. Yeah, his website is, in, is it, it encompasses, you know, professional services that are needed within the logistics industry. So when someone like you ship, uh, or, or, or central dispatch who are very picky about who they let in. When they come here and they look at this, what are they? What what impression is this type of website giving them? Professional, you know what they're doing. Exactly. In exactly. the business, professional, you know what he's doing. Even on YouTube, when they see you don't have a register, but they go to your website. Well, shoot, you might not have been on YouTube long. This guy know what he's doing. Yeah, he's in the business. Exactly. Auto transportation services. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just saying what I guess a client from UShip. Um, I don't know if you saw my my website on UShip, but she actually sent me an email through my website about, you know, you know, how long I've been in the business and what I do. And I actually just replied to an email tell her, you know, because she was saying I don't have any ratings. So exactly. I was just explaining to exactly. her why. Exactly. You see auto trans Service. Here at DZR Logistics Transport LLC, we specialize 
in automobile relocations. Okay, providing relocation services for now, you, now, now pay very close, pay very close attention to this. Car dealerships, college students, family, job, and more. Y'all see what he did? That directly speaks to both blue chip and central dispatch, right? Right. So as I guarantee you, when he when he did this, that's who he was talking to. Okay, this directly speaks to both those services. Working with us, we ensure that you get the results you're after, including guaranteed quality service at an affordable. Okay, a little, a little about us here at DZ Our Logistics Transport LLC. We work for you, finding you top end loads as an owner operator, business manager. When we told you all, use that term other than dispatch firm or dispatcher. As an owner operator, business manager, we aim to not only meet your needs, but also exceed your expectations of what a dispatch service can be. Quality dispatch services since 2008. I like that. I like that. I like that. If, <laughs> hey, Calvin, if it, if, and if you click about us, it show a little bit more. Isn't it about us or contact us? <laughs> one of them. Right up here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me, when I hit. Yeah, y'all see y'all see this photo gallery, right? The first thing I'm um, in his photo gallery, it just happened to be there, but in his photo gallery, they kind of swerved by and the auto hall was there. You know, somebody who's on you should look at this like, oh okay, so this is okay, yeah. Um, what are you doing? And this is time to okay. This is not a beginner, this is someone who kind of knows what they're doing. Okay. And this is what we mean. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a nine car haul, right? Mm -hmm. That's a nine car haul. They even have some that are 11 cars. Yep. Okay. Now that's a nine car haul. They can go up to 11 cars. All right. Now, if you think you've got them, all these on here at 150 200 $300 a car, and you go in and you say to them, and they say they have a spot available. You say, I'll give you $500 to add one more car, $600 to add one more car. They say, yeah, they have, to, they, have to, they have to grab that. Okay. All right. Uh, about us. Yeah. I like detail auto hauling service. Provide top class automobile relocation service for individuals across the country. Services for car dealership auction, brokers, carriers, students, moving for college, real estate companies, for moving families, etc. Contact us for all your automobile relocation needs. This uh, even has the dispatching rate on here for one of the dispatching. Uh, I like this. It's good there. This is this is. This is one of the reasons why, you know, um, I mean, you, you, you're really taking in, you know, everything that we tried to convey to you and, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and you have um, put together, I mean, you really exemplify <clears throat> what it is we're trying to get people to do and to, um, in the way you want to do your business. And, and I can, I can see right now that, you know, EZR is going to be, so as big as you know, one of the other ones that we uh, coached on um, uh, logistics. Um, um, what's the other one? Uh, Riacom. Um, you know, all those companies started. You know, they started here too. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, 2017, early part of 2018. Those two companies started here as well, and now they're international powerhouse. Okay, so I'm. I'm really proud of the way our platform has developed and what we offer to people. Um, and when I say that there's not another platform on in the industry quite like this one, that's exactly what I mean. And I can say that with all honesty and 100% sincerity because there is, there is not another platform um, like this one. No one, no one out there does what we do, they don't provide you with the things that we provide you all with. They don't, they don't uh, 
um, um, instruct you all how to be how to be entrepreneurs within the, within within this industry. Everyone else is just basically trying to teach you the rules, the regulations, the terms, the terminology, how to quote lane rates. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's, that's the basics of what they're trying to, what they're charging you for when you take those boot camps and all this other stuff. And, and, and that's okay, because <clears throat> there's a market for, for that. It's just not a market that, that I wanted to promote. Um, I wanted to feel that the gap of actually making money, <laughs> you know, not the theory of how to do business or, you know, the rules of how to do business, but I wanted to actually take a platform that showed you all how to actually literally make money within the industry, okay? So that's, when you break it down, that's why you're here. That's why you're here. If you want to, I mean, if, I mean, I mean, let's be honest, you can learn the rules by Google. Right? You can Google how to call land rates. I'll tell you that too. Right? So, right. so I mean, you can Google that stuff and it'll tell it to you just as good, if not better, than some of those boot camps or whatever that you're going through. But if you want to know how to make money, okay? If you want to know how to make money, if you want the tools and resources that's going to actually save you money, because a, a penny saved is what? A penny made. So if you're if you're serious about making money, if you want to know how to make money with this industry, this is the platform for you. All right. Sorry I got off subject there, but anyway, <clears throat> good job, Darren. Good job. I like Thank this. You. I like this. All right. Um any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? What time is it? Oh, it's one o'clock, y'all. I'm so glad we had this time together. <laughs> <laughs> y'all watch Karen. Uh, y'all uh, ever watch um, Karen Burnett show? Yeah. yeah. I grew up, I, I, man, I grew up watching that show, and when she got that point right there, there were times when I felt like crying. <laughs> <laughs> and she say, so long, everybody. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, as always, I appreciate you all uh, tuning in and taking time to uh, watch the Saturday mornings and spending it with us and watching uh, what we have to offer. And, and I hope that we are able to uh, provide you all with um, insight and the knowledge that you um, didn't know you had already. Uh, and, 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 and I hope we're actually helping you all be better logistics entrepreneurs because that's our goal. I, and I say this a lot, because I really, really mean it. Um, the goal of the of the RBS Business Learning Center is not just to teach you all how to book freight. And, 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 and if that's all it was about, then I, I really wouldn't waste my time doing this every Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and every Saturday, and all the stuff that we put in. We want to show you all how to make money. We want to show you all how to be successful entrepreneurs. We want to show you all how to solve problems within the industry, because so that's where it's really at. Everybody can talk about problems. Anybody can recognize problems. Everybody can go, oh, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem. You know, cheap rate, cheap rate, cheap rate, cheap rate. But who is actually doing something about it? Okay? The people that actually put, you know, put the road and start doing something to address these problems those are the ones who are becoming millionaires within and billionaires within the industry. Think about that. Okay. Great gains and, and big moves are not made inside the box. They're not made in the comfort zone. They're made outside of the box, outside of the comfort zones. If you want to be a real mover and shaker and someone who's actually doing big things in any industry, you gotta get outside of your comfort zone. And that's why, like today, I was forcing you all to really, really, really think and really concentrate on how can you solve the problem of cheap freight, you know, of driver shortages and things like that. You gotta think beyond what you actually see there 
and start coming up with innovative ways to solve problems. And if you can do that, ain't no limit to you know what your revenue or how far you can go. You know, see, it's just it's, it just becomes a it just becomes a matter of how far you want to go and what problem you want to solve next. So let's keep that in mind. <clears throat> um, next week, I hope to have either the factoring company uh, rep here as a guest and uh, speaking to you all about what they can do and all the things that factoring companies do. Uh, we did a uh, we did a show a while back called. Uh, I don't think you know what you think you know about packing companies. So, <laughs> and that turned out pretty good. So we're gonna have them um, come in and talk to you all. Uh, also, here in the near future, we're gonna have the people from um, from the CNTMS. They're gonna be here, uh, and they're gonna talk to you all about uh, the CN uh, um, TMS system, the, the truck management system, because. Uh, we are working with them, and they're showing you all how dispatch firm. They're showing, they'll be showing you how how this excuse me how the CNTMS could be a big advantage for dispatch firms, and also the factory companies. They are working with we, we are working with the first uh, factory company that is developing a product just for dispatchers, so that you all can have your stuff factory. You don't have to wait for your money uh, for, from the the carriers. Hold on. This is Cal with the RB Best of Just Learning Center. Can you hold for just one minute? We're, we're wrapping up our show. Just hold on uh, for just one minute. All right. Uh, now, now, again, we appreciate each and every last one of you all. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I've had a great time, uh, as I do every Saturday. And uh, for those of you who are not members of our platform, if you like what you see, if you like the idea of having someone to, or having a platform, that not only shows you how to book freight, but shows you how to become logistics entrepreneurs and how to make money within this industry, because that's what it's really all about. Join us. Go to mydispatcher.org. That is mydispatcher.org. That's singular, not plural. When you get there, go to the, um, the very first page, and you'll see a video right in the middle of the page. Underneath that video, click where it says to enroll. Click here. And that will take you over to our automated enrollment. And you can enroll with any type of credit card into one of our plans. We have the, um, the individual plan as well as the corporate plans. But until next week, we'll be right back here. Same back channel, same back time. And I hope to see you all on Monday for our six figures, I'm sorry, for the how to um, dispatch series. That's every Monday night. So hope to see you all back here on Monday at 8 p.m. And next Saturday again at in 15 a.m. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate every last one of y'all. Y'all have a great, great, great weekend. Thank you, Calvin. Thanks, Calvin. Peace. Thank you. All right. Uh, one moment, ma'am. Let me end this broadcast.